Hey friends, it's Tracy. Welcome to today's video. I hope that you are enjoying my Christmas in July 2023 crafts that I am sharing with you. Some of my favorites from years past and that kind of thing. Well, today I have a brand new video for you sharing how I created this Oh Christmas Tree decor piece. Now guys, I'm going to go through from start to finish of how I created it. And what's special about this is I had uh, it participated in an event this past weekend. It was an old fashioned Christmas event with some of my friends on Facebook. And so I was live on Facebook showing some of this and we only have 45 minutes to craft. And, uh, you know, when you do a live video, it's almost like you're inviting friends into your home and they hang out with you. You uh, talk to them, welcome them, share stories and that kind of thing but for my youtube channel i will have the uh, edited version start to finish of how i created this wonderful decor piece i'm so in love with the way that it turned out for christmas in july so let's go ahead and get started and let me show you how i created this oh christmas tree decor piece Okay, the first thing I did was uh, draw out my or hand letter my banner and uh, sometimes when I am crafting live um, I get nervous and so I prefer to do any kind of hand lettering or anything like that. Um, you know, off camera, not on a live video, just because I get like my anxiety, anxiety is too high. And so what I did is I just uh, wrote out a oh, Christmas tree. I put my happy dots on each one of the or ends of the letters. Uh, I just took my little detailing brush and just using some white paint now and just going in each of the happy dots just to give it uh, just some highlight. And so I will have a link in the description box if uh, you want to kind of learn how to hand letter like this. There are free fonts that I have found uh, from defont.com that you can download onto your computer and you can practice and you can uh, find your own style and figure out what works for you. And that'll be great. The scrapbook paper uh, that I got out of this pack, I got this at Hobby Lobby during their 75% off sale. This paper pad is called Old World Winter, and I love every single one of these papers in here. They're actually cardstock, which is a little bit thicker than paper. So what I, I really like the edges of it. So what I'm going to do is cut it in half just with my paper trimmer. And then since this is a uh, uh, rectangle shape, I'm going to need to use that second piece piece cut off a piece of that uh, and so that I could you know capture the edges the way that I want I just trimmed it in half or just cut it in half then cut this one down so that I would have where it all looked like it was cohesive and everything matched up. This board is also one that I picked up from Hobby Lobby, 75% off sale, and it measures 15.75 by 11.81. That is exactly what was on the tag on the back. So I'm just kind of showing you here how I just uh, cut those apart, or actually just cut them in the middle. Now to adhere it all down, I'm just taking my Elmer's glue stick. Um, I think that sometimes we forget how well Elmer's glue actually works. So I am just uh, gluing, all, you know, I just put that down on that board and then just, you know, position my paper all up the way that I want it to and just making sure that that um, is down there in the middle. And so here I have just a piece of uh, parchment cardstock um, paper. This is something that I've had on hand. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to be painting a tree. And so I have three different uh, colors of green that I'm going to be using. Uh, the first one is darker, it's the evergreen. And these are all uh, uh, Americana brands. And so I'm just using evergreen, holly green, and a desert cactus. Those are the colors that I'm going to use. So I'm using my fan brush. And so I'm just kind of showing you here. I just kind of 
uh, start in the middle and then I'm just going to you do some wispies all the way down then um, I'll go back on the other side I'll continue to add some wispies uh, making my tree larger as I want it to be So I'll just continue uh, with the evergreen. Then I will go in with uh, holly green. And then uh, the top one is uh, desert cactus. Now those are the greens that I used for my uh, kind of my old Christmas tree right here. I was just kind of sharing with uh, the people on the live video. I was just sharing um, kind of what an old uh, fashioned Christmas. That was the event that I was participating in. What it actually means to me and so I know that um, a lot of my friends uh, on YouTube that do not like the live videos or the chatter or that kind of thing and so I don't know I kind of have mixed you know uh, feelings about that um, you know some people love it some people ask me all the time why why do I not do more live videos and it's just for time purposes um, I um, you know, I'm really trying to grow my channel here on YouTube and um, people here really like to just either just watch the video <laughs> and not have a lot of the talking and that kind of thing. And so um, I do appreciate you being here. Uh, again, I'm just, you know, going on if I get a little too heavy in some spots, then I go back with some of those paints and just kind of blend that out a little bit. Uh, I'll go in with some ivory or some antique white and just add some of the highlights that I like for my little you know doodles and that kind of thing uh, I got this heat tool uh, recently at Hobby Lobby in the scrapbooking section I had some questions about that so I just wanted to share that it was only like $14.99 so which I thought was very reasonable and sometimes I don't want to pull out my big heat gun uh, and so that smaller one just works really good especially on paper like this I like the tattered edges that I get when I rip my paper. So what I do is I start um, just at the top and I pull the paper toward my body so that I get the torn edges. And so I'll just continue to do that all the way around um, the tree until I get to the top part. Now there was um, a little section there at the top that I had gotten a little too far over with my fan brush. And so what I was saying is that that's what I do to encourage everyone. Uh, it's only paint and you know we can kind of correct our mistakes as we go along either repaint by repainting it or in this case you would need to get another piece of cardstock just because this is paper okay so then I am going to add some distressing and my favorite uh, distress distressing ink is a vintage photo uh, that and I use my little finger dauber just to add a little bit of the um, you know color as I go along and so I'll do that all the way around the tree I'm also going to do uh, it also with the uh, banner or the old Christmas tree that I had uh, you know hand lettered and uh, again if you want to you know <laughs> you know practice 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 is the best thing I will have a link in the description box to the free fonts that I have found that have dots on them. If you want to practice, you know, download those from defont.com onto your computer. You can draw it out on, or like print them out on uh, just copy paper, and then you can trace them onto different cardstock or, uh, you know, just different thing. And practice, practice, practice is what I encourage everyone to do. All right, I have this music sheet um, scrapbook paper that I also got from Hobby Lobby. And um, I've just had a couple of pieces of it from different you know, projects in the past and that kind of thing. So what I'm doing is kind of measuring it so that, uh, cause one is not wide enough or long enough. So I need to tape a couple of the pieces together so that I would have enough so that I can rip it uh, around the edges to kind of give it like a shadow around my old Christmas tree banner and my tree. 
And what I did once I kind of got my placement before I glued anything down, what I took is my friction pen. I got these off of Amazon and they're like invisible ink, but I wanted something that, uh, you know, it wouldn't be permanent. So what I did, I just kind of pushed my stuff on there and just kind of drew around so that once I ripped my paper that I wouldn't know give me kind of a line uh, to follow or guesstimate. And, but I do need to go and, you know, add uh, or tear some pieces and that's totally fine. I like continue to do that as I am doing this project, figuring out how I need to, uh, what pieces or what areas I want so that I get the shadow that I want around my banner and my tree. So I left this part in here guys, because two things happen. First of all, when I put that shorter piece up at the top, my music notes were upside down. <laughs> I didn't catch it until I was, you know, tearing the shadow piece around. And then also, uh, my piece was a little short. And so what I did is I just took that, uh, piece off of there and, uh, then added a larger piece, put my notes the right way so that they were, uh, you know, since I had to switch it out. And so then I'll just continue to rip it uh, until I get the shadow that I want. And so then what I did also is add some vintage photo just to give it some distressing around. I like the aged old look uh, for my projects like this. And so my uh, favorite color is vintage photo. That is my favorite. Uh, and I get mine off of Amazon or you can also get it uh, from Michaels and Hobby Lobby. So uh, for my tree, what I'll do is just make sure everything is going to position on there. And then I'm going to uh, grab that garland. Now, as I mentioned, the garland that I got, uh, this is something that I've had on hand. I got it from Joanne's craft store, you know, several years ago. It's a little garland. It has pit berries. It has this teeny tiny jingle bells on it. So I'm kind of uh, wrapping it around my paper tree here, just kind of securing it with some tape. And then I'm going to use some of that Silly Winks, which is that thicker fun foam. Just cut uh, pieces of that down. Like I said, it comes in a variety of colors over there at Hobby Lobby. Then I'll just glue those uh, there in different parts and it kind of gives, uh, you know, kind of holds down that garland as well as pops up that tree just to give me a little dimension. And then once I get the placement for that, then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing uh, with the banner. Just add some of that silly winks or fun foam. I just still call it fun foam for years. <laughs> I was knew it as fun foam. And so whatever reason they changed the name to silly winks, I really don't. Don't know why uh, but uh, anyway that is what they did and so you can see I just kind of keep you know messing with my paper uh, until I get the look that I want and then um, for the bottom of my tree I will add the trunk that is those three jingle blocks uh, that I wrapped with a burlap I'm gonna put that at the bottom of my tree but I make sure that everything is um, has spaced out before I glue all of that down so underneath that banner I'm using uh, my favorite fine excelsior that I get from Hobby Lobby I like the very fine uh, excelsior that is it's kind of like Spanish moss is really what it's like and it just it adds just a bit of whimsy and it really makes makes my country projects pop and I like the look of it. Okay, what I'm doing here is adding some glitter. I like glitter on my projects. Uh, everyone is different. So what I have is this uh, makeshift kind of uh, holder for when I spray my uh, adhesive and then put my glitter on. It's just an old cereal box that I just kind of cut apart and uh, glue, or not actually glue, uh, spray, and then do my little glitter. And so then uh, once that's dry, then what I'll do is glue down my uh, music paper and then the banner I kind of work in sections so that uh, I don't lose my place and just hot glue that to you know to the back of the of the uh, polka dot paper then I will add uh, the trunk of my tree which is that little uh, three 
Jenga blocks glued with burlap down there at the bottom so that I don't miss anything. And then undoubtedly, I forgot to film the star. I did, um, you know, use some glue to adhere my star to the, uh, okay, that's what I'm using. I was like, I for, don't remember doing my the star, but that's what I use. Some Aline's Tacky Glue. I love Aline's Tacky Glue. It's like one of my favorite. Um, so I just glue that down, give it a little bit thicker glue, uh, better hold. And so that's what I did with my star as well. So here we go. That's when I glued down my star there at the top, just so that, you know, everything uh, would line up correctly. Okay, so then on that little Pitberry garland, what I did is I just took strips of the homespun. Again, I find my homespun at Hobby Lobby, Walmart, or JubileeFabric.com. I just ripped uh, thin strips of it. And then I am just tying it around the... Uh, that little Pitberry garland just in a knot. And then I'm using my pinking shear scissors. Those are the ones that are like zigzag on the ends. And I really feel that, you know, just by cutting it off, it just gives it a little bit more decor or decoration than just cutting it off straight. But everyone has their own choice, you know, or on own way that they like the ends of their ribbon or their fabric to look. <laughs> 